Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll begin at the number three spot with a new journal that will be released uh, from Cardiosource. You'll be getting it in your mailbox this week uh, called Cardiosource World News. And as you can see, I think from the cover page, this will be a different type news journal, magazine, uh, aimed at having clinical science, all of what's going on in cardiology, some of the latest numbers and uh, new people, uh, technology, lots of uh, fun things, some tough cases, trial summaries, uh, but to be a little different and hopefully uh, be a new type of publication to help you keep on top of all that's going on in cardiology. Now, this week's number two spot is a very interesting article from uh, Denmark where over a 10-year period they tracked uh, patients with atrial fibrillation and looked at interruptions in warfarin. Now, out of uh, 48,000 patients, they found that over that 10-year period, 35,000 of them had an interruption of at least uh, one time period. And over the next 90 days, the rate of stroke was 31 percent, uh, which is enormous. Now, this is an observational study, and that trails off over time down to about 11 events um, per 100 patient years. Uh, and so uh, it highlights what we would all expect, um, a higher risk of stroke when interrupting warfarin for, uh, you know, during treatment of atrial fibrillation, but reminds us that it's an ever-present risk that uh, one needs to treat. And at the number one spot is a fascinating article uh, looking at subclinical atrial fibrillation and other tachyarrhythmias, a study in the New England Journal with 2,500 patients that had pacemakers and, and devices that could monitor atrial rate. And they found that over a 90-day period, 10% of the patients had uh, likely atrial fibrillation with tachycardic uh, heart rates uh, for a prolonged period of time. And then of those patients, they had a higher risk, about a 2.5 hazard ratio of developing a stroke relative to other patients who did not have those atrial tachycardias. And this is subclinical atrial uh, arrhythmias, and so raises the specter that there are many more patients at risk even beyond those that we know of with chronic atrial fibrillation or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation clinically. And so for this week's Cardiosource uh, World News and Cardiosource Video News, I'm Chris Cannon.